Well, hello everybody. I wanted to do this video because I learned something yesterday in Moto, which I didn't even know I could do. See, I I came over from 3ds Max. So I was a 3ds Max user, and so I was always thinking that Moto didn't really have the same kind of polyline curve functionality as Max. You know how you'd create a line, you'd utilize the modifier stack, and you would well, you get a whole different group of effects from sweep lofts. But the thing that annoyed me most was uh, not being able to create wires like I used to in the Max. And I just kind of wrote this off as a sacrifice to have to make. You know, things have their strengths and weaknesses, so I thought this was about as good as it was going to get when I wanted to create wires, utilizing some snapping, etc. But no, no. Yesterday I learned something rather quite interesting. Uh, I wish I'd worked this out sooner, but it's really quite cool. You see, we're in the Mesh Ops tab. That's going to be important to remember, not the items. They look similar. It might be called procedural if you're on an older version of Moto, but that's where it's at. So I'm going to create a curve. I'll go for a B-spline. We'll just create something. Just give us a little something to work with. Up, down, around. Curly, curly. Very nice. Very good. Let's rename that to curve. Very important to keep your things named because that's how you keep your scene organized instead of just having mesh one, mesh two, mesh three, not knowing what the hell each one is. Let's call this polyface extrude for a lack of a better term. Right. Let's go into our basic shapes. We'll drop that and we'll make a nice box. Not a mean nasty box, a very nice box. Delete all those faces. Let's kind of get it a bit more to origin. Doesn't have to be exact, not for this. And we'll scale in a bit. All right, now here's where the magic happens. You ready for this? All right, so we go into the polyface extrude where we are, and we'll add an operator. And look, I've already got the search done, but you got a nice little search bar here. So you have like loads of deformers. The entire way to think of mesh ops and um, or procedural whatever it's called in the earlier versions, is to think of it as a modifier stack in Max. And this little bit here, this square here, this is your stack. So we're going to go for a curve extrude. And we'll select the path. And boom. I mean, it's nearly there, nearly there. So we'll have to invert the polygons because, well, obviously they were flipped. Um. Instead of polygon type, we'll have an edge extrude. Oh, okay. Well, they weren't flipped <laughs> if you do it by the edge. Okay, so that's that's not bad. But um, what advantage does that have over tubes? Well, this is where we go. We can go back down into this layer, and we can start editing this if we like. So I can press tab to subdivide it, or even better. Scale it down a little more. So copy paste. Copy paste. Copy paste. Very nice. I have several wires. Ooh, fancy, fancy. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, let's bevel them in a bit. Right, and let's go back up in the stack. Ooh, that's a mess. And if that's because they've been so the divide of that little probably. I'm merging some polys. Something funky's going on there that does not normally happen. 
but uh okay regardless we can uh delete down delete all these if we like and we can start again why not Strenix true from the side do 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 and delete boom and now nothing funky is going on with that so like i say you don't need to put it at the origin it just uh seems to work best seems to rotate it more than anything so i like to work from as close to the origin as i can get i got a script somewhere to dump things at origin but okay enough rambling about the origin so we got the pulse segment generator here this is quite useful because you can increase the steps you know which will obviously smooth over the tube or wire or you can just click automatic which isn't perfect as you can see but um it's better than just the default 24. that's a little more shape based off the curve but uh okay let's just keep it on automatic for now and we'll go back to where the fun is so we'll go back to the curve in uh, polygon mode and we will go down to curve hit up the B spline get the nice edit and we look at that look at that we got real time let's go to the advanced shooting uh, okay and wait one second here for the inactive meshes we will not show them as wireframe we will show them as advanced all right look at that so totally live interaction want to move it about i can do that want to add new points can add new points why not so this is really a hell of a way to make wires you know compared with like the tube method you can make so many different edits and once again i can just come back down to the space mesh Start putting up more wires. If the ends are giving me problems, which looks like they are. Because look at all that jank. Jeez. Let's try removing the caps. Yeah, I can always quad cap that later. Yeah, so that was probably more the problem. The caps were giving me jank, so there we go. So you end up with just these beautiful wires you can just fully edit through the stack editor through the mesh operations and they, they just remain live so it's not like the static tubes where you get to a point and then you can just uh you want to make a change you want to add some extra wires and you can't do anything because well <laughs> you've already made it so can keep keep editing which is great and you can do that to your heart's content so yeah i thought i'd just share that that's my whole new method of making tubes in motor and uh i hope that helps have a good one